So look at what we have here. We have the Velox F411 FC with a 45 amp ESC stack and they call it light because it is light on the pocket but not light in performance. Let's get right to it. But why should we actually look at an F4 when we can get an F7? It's because you don't really need an F7 to fly well. Because with Betaflight, really what a flight controller does, it uses its control system. Essentially, it is the brains controlling how you move. Right. If you want to move right, it tells it to move right and then it detects what the drone is doing and then it makes sure you stay right or left or forward and so on and so forth. And an F4 processor is actually enough to do all of those calculations for you. The F7 only gives you the ability to add more ports onto the processor without burdening it further. So really, if you want to fly economically, and still fly well, the F4 is the only thing that you need. But what typically hinders a person choosing between an F4 and an F7 is actually the amount of ports that you have. So here, let's look at the ports that we have here, okay? So on top, we have ground, 5 volts, LED buzzer, and then we have battery, ground, 5 volts, and then video in. So basically, that's where you connect your camera, all right? And then on the right side, you have where you connect your VTX, which is battery, ground, 5 volt, video out, and TX1, and then ground, 5 volt, S bus. So the T1 is what you use for smart audio conventionally, and then S bus is where you connect um, RC links such as FreeSky. But here also you have the ability to uh, also link in your RC link, ground 5 volts. T1 and R1, and that is actually quite good to be used already as crossfire. So, but here you have ground 5 volt T1 R1, and remember there's already a T1 here, this is already a T1 here, but we can also use this T1, and then you have ground 5 volt T2 R2, and then here you have a 5 volt ground and then SDA and SCL. And this is typically used for the Compass SDA SL, for the uh, GPS. Let's assume now, conventionally, what you would do is just connect your VTX here and your control link here and then you're done. And basically, and the reason why is you only want to control the craft from here and you would use that with FreeSky or DSM. And then you would just connect your camera and then you would have your VTX in order to transmit your video. That would be enough. Now, you want to do more and of course, you may want more UART, but really, there's one component that typically pe that people really, really want, which is the ability to connect the GPS. So in this case, t Motor has said, okay, if you want to connect a GPS, then what you would do is actually connect your RC link here. So you would use the ground 5 volt T1 R1 that would be where you want to connect your crossfire or any other protocol here, okay? Even Express LRS, okay? And then you would use this T2R2 to be your connector for your GPS, okay? So you would then enable T1R1 for RC link and T2R2 for GPS. Because you've already used T1 for RC link, you can't use T1 here anymore. So what you would actually do is they've supplied uh, the code, but it's easy enough for you to remap the resource that the LED strip can now act as a transmit pad. Essentially what you're doing here is converting the LED to another UART. Soft Serial basically uses the software to reconfigure how data is transmitted or received by the processor. So use the following steps to enable Soft Serial on the LED strip. So upon entering beta flight, you go to the ports and you'll see that you only have the two UARTs enabled, okay? So you have UART 1, UART 2, but you need three UARTs. So now we want to be, we want to enable the soft serial because we want to use the smart audio on that LED strip. What you would do is go to the website for the flight controller. You even, uh, is the same if you went to the stack webpage. Down uh, at the bottom of the page, you can download the 
RAR file and which actually has the CLI dump in order to enable the soft serial. All right, so we'll open it up and you can see here there's a whole bunch of commands. You don't have to understand what's going on, you just have to copy it. Okay, and then now go back to Betaflight, go to CLI, and then just you've already copied it, so now you just need to paste it. Okay, it's actually all pasted. You see a few reds, don't worry, those are just uh, minor errors. Okay, it's not even an error, it's just uh, the way Betaflight is. Okay. So let it do its thing. So right now it's just copying all of these settings onto the flight controller. All right. And because it's from T-Motor, so it's all uh, the default num uh, default uh, values that they're fine with. Okay, which is good. Okay, so now you can see here they just said, okay, be sure before you click save. Okay, and you can see here it's just a few assignments of sonar, for example, which you're never gonna use. So you just go back down and then type in save and then enter it will now save onto the flight controller all right and now what you can actually see here is the soft seal port has been enabled and that soft seal port is the led strip okay so now you can actually enable smart audio onto the led so when you wire the led tx you can then um, you can wire the RX line from the VTX onto the LED TX pad. So let's look at then with the cost. I'll put it up what it costs right now on the T Motor website. Subject to change, of course. So, what other features do we have here other than uh, the UARTs? Okay, you have a 8 meg back box, you have a USB there. You have the F411 processor. You have a BMI270 gyro. There's the boot button right there in the middle, okay. And then we have the F765E OSD. And then we have the five volt, two amp BECs. So that's what you have right there, okay. And of course you can mount it on 20 or 30 millimeters. And look at how beefy the ESC is All right and, and and I actually like uh, this type of design where they try to save they try to save some space okay All right by going uh, 30 by 30 they try to make it light as possible but at the same time they don't want to skimp on the size of the uh, ESC so the ESC here is 45 amp right Okay, you have the MOSFETs here, you have the capacitance 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13 capacitance, so that's good. It's not as many as Teco, but of course they're trying to keep the cost down, okay. And they have huge pads, okay, alright. But if you can see here, it's great for 30 by 30, but if you wanted to mount this as a 20 by 30, then that would be... Uh, quite difficult because the ESC doesn't actually have 30 so as a okay so as a stack I think this is made for 30 by 30 right okay but if you wanted to use the FC standalone for 20 by 20 you can but then you'd have to look for an ESC which is 20 by 20 all right that's 16 18 grams will the 1950 create too much strain on to the 45 amp ESC, which then causes problems, right? Are we actually okay with going with the 1950? Of course, you can go with the lower KV at 1750, but are we okay with the 1950 KV, 200 KV is higher, right? To give you the extra oomph, and will the 45 amp ESC be able to sustain that high amp, okay? So if I look up here, on to the 1950 okay because I like to fly 51466 with the V2207 V2 1950 assuming I fly at 100% I'm actually producing 44 amps okay that will be 44 amps for each motor right and this is 45 amp continuous you can actually go much much higher it is also rated for for 55 amp up to 10 seconds right that's the max current it can go to so yes 
the F411 with the 45M ASC can actually go with a full-blown rig such as 1950 V2207 Velox. So go get yours today for a great price, for great reliability and the ability to run your RC that you want to be able to run a GPS and still be able to use smart audio. So thank you very much for staying to right to the end. Like and subscribe.